Hey, this is Chris from Pixelwix, and we're just taking a look of how to edge blend and geometric correct a uh, projection screen on a curved surface. So here we're using multiple uh, projectors. This is a three projector on a curved screen, and we're looking at the uh, right-hand side of the screen, so it's projector two and three. And uh, we're just going to go through the first steps that you need to do uh, to get this working. Uh, we're using Pixelwix uh, Pixel Warp software, and uh, what you see here is a color test pattern. This is the first step to achieving a good edge blend. So when you've got the pattern up like this, you want to make sure that you've butted up your um, edges of your screen. Um, I'm just using the control points here uh, to move uh, the screen. So um, I can just grab hold of the edges and make sure they butt up to each other. I'm not going to overlap yet, but I'm just going to butt up. And the reason I'm doing this is that I'm running the color pattern test. And you can see the colors going across here. Um, between the two projectors and what I'm going to do is adjust the projectors obviously to make sure that they're as close as possible this is really critical to getting a good edge blend a seamless edge blend anyway so here we um, go up to the projectors at this point I can switch off uh, individual uh, uh, projectors if I need to just to uh, see what's going on and uh, I would go up in the projectors now and I'd make sure these are okay obviously I'm not going to do that now because that's going to take up too much time but um, so that's what you need one of the things you need to do put a test pattern up uh, also check uh, grey patterns uh, for your contrast and brightness to make sure they match and get it as close as possible. Now we do have a technique inside the software for you to tweak this as well. I'll just bring one of those uh, sliders up which looks like that. And that slide will allow you to adjust the uh, three gun outputs from the uh, DLP projector. So you've got red, green and blue slider here which will enable me to uh, get the color closer with software. But I can do more of that later. Um, so now we've got this type of thing going, what we need to do is to put on the um, uh, grid um, with our test patterns um, here and uh, we can see that we've got a, a portion that we've got to adjust now to overlap these. We've got two uh, 32s in this uh, pattern here and they should be on top of each other. The way we got those two 32s or a duplicate image in the crossover was a thing called um, uh, offset, so image offset. So if I go to um, the projector number two and take the over off offset overlap feature and move and adjust that I can actually see these numbers change we've got it on 350 at the moment so 350 aside percentage um, normally your percentage is about 12 percent but you can find your uh, projector uh, overlap gap by moving a panel um, into your edges of your projectors and see where it starts to change which is there so now I've got two images as I come through and before it goes into the right projector. So there's the end of the left projector and it starts to come into the uh, right of the center projector there and comes on the other side. So my gap is quite large there and I can adjust this how I want now. So now the, I can adjust this figure here to adjust see more of 32 or 33. So you want some overlap. So I'm going for two um, overlaps here actually. And now I'm going to go, uh, so I've got two squares overlapping. And now I'm going to grab hold of the um, points, control points, and overlap them. So I'm using the um, vertical lock at the moment because I've already straightened out some of the lines across uh, horizontally. So now I'm going to vertically move these whole uh, lines across here. So I want to move these. Uh, I'm not going to go right across to the other side I see right now. I'm going to go halfway. So I'll find my mouse point, my halfway is somewhere where I am now actually. So I'll, I'll stop somewhere about here, make sure my squares are not being stretched too much and then I'll have a go on the other side. So now I go on to projector three and move projector three's um, image over. And I do this uh, slowly until I get my image uh, where I need it. So you can see that I need to go right across here somewhere, the 32, 33, and I need to get this one over here like that. So uh, the, obviously it takes a little while just to make sure that you're not uh, stretching uh, too many points around and making your squares look really ugly. Um, so this is the technique we use um, on manual adjustments and uh, once we've got this uh, uh, all linear we can do some linear tests to see what we're doing or what we're doing wrong maybe and uh, then we can move on to the edge blending. So I'm getting close. Um, let's just do uh, projector 
Now, one of the things that's always a bit funny when you're doing this is that the mouse will become the two mouse pointers at some point as you go through the edge blend. And that's just because the mice, uh, you have got two projectors and you are overlapping them so that, that you end up with two mice on the screen, if you can say mice. Um, so let's just have a little tweak there. Um, it looks fairly good. I mean, I've got obviously I've got some uh, horizontals still to work on, and that's again I can just put this back into single mode and uh, just straighten up um, some small points here and there. You know, like this one here is not right, and so on. It's not too far out though, not for this test anyway. So once we've got the uh, basic uh, shape uh, going good, now we have to do. Uh, some checks for things like linearity and we can do that and see whether the lines that go up and down we can take the image out of the way perhaps and we can see that going on whether the actual lines are fairly linear um, apart from each other as they move through the screen make sure there's no uh, strange uh, warping and curving there's a little bit here that needs to be adjusting but it's not not drastic I still got a bit of uh, you can see the line is not actually over the top of each other there so I know I've got a little bit of adjustment to play with but that's the basis of uh, getting this right. The other thing that's important is that um, that the screen material has a wide view angle and not a high gain. If you have a high gain, you'll get what they call hot spots. And hot spots will be where you see very bright areas of the screen. Not talking about this double area here, because this double area is caused by the fact that the two projectors are overlapping and there's twice as much light in this area, which is what we're going to get in the next video. So what we're talking about is the fact that the screen material itself is not very linear across its uh, viewing angle. Therefore, when you move around, the, uh, you'll get a, a brighter spot from one projector than you will another, and you'll see the edge blend again. The other aspect of um, getting this uh, right is to uh, make sure that your uh, projectors are color corrected, um, gamma corrected, and brightness corrected. Without that, really, it's very impossible. And your overlap needs to be a good percentage, um, at least 12% probably, to make sure you've got a long enough distance for one projector's color to fade out to another. This is really what we're doing, is that the color of our projectors are not going to match. Um, even if we do go and try and match them with color on the, uh, on the projector themselves, very rarely do they match when they're on screen. So now the trick is to obviously um, blend one color's change out to another, so you can't really notice it. Uh, so this is just working on the alignment and uh, in the next video we'll work on the actual edge blend.